everyone. Welcome to Learning Literature with Purva. In today's video, we are going to discuss William Shakespeare's play A Midsummer Night's Dream. So at first we are going to take a look at the characters and the act by act summary of the play. Then we will discuss and critically analyze the play as a romantic comedy. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. A Midsummer Night's Dream is a romantic comedy written by William Shakespeare around 1595. So it has fun, laughter and love. It also has magic, fairies and dreams. The play is set in two places, number one in Athens and number two in a forest outside Athens. As there are many characters in the play, we have divided the characters into three main categories for your convenience. So the first category is Athenians, the noble people of Athens. There we have Duke Theseus, who is the Duke of Athens. We have Hippolyta, Queen of the Amazons, who is to be married to Duke Theseus. Then we have Hermia, who is in love with Lysander. We have Lysander, who is in love with Hermia. We have Aegeus, who is Hermia's father, and he wants Hermia to marry Demetrius. So we have Demetrius, who is the suitor to Hermia. And we have Helena, who is best friend of Hermia, and she is in love with Demetrius. The second category of characters are the fairies. Who live in the forest. We have Oberon, King of the Fairies, Titania, Queen of the Fairies, and Puck or Robert Goodfellow, who is a mischievous fairy. The third category of characters are the mechanicals or laborers who are doing rehearsal for a play that they want to perform in Duke Theseus and Hippolyta's wedding. So the important characters are. Nick Bottom, who is a weaver, Peter Quince, who is a carpenter, and Francis Flute, who is a bellows mender. So these are the main characters of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Now that you know about the main characters, we can now look at the act by act summary of the play. Act 1. Duke Theseus is preparing for his marriage to Queen Hippolyta. He is interrupted by a courtier called Aegeus. Aegeus tells the Duke to interfere in a family problem. Aegeus has chosen a man for his daughter Hermia, but Hermia is in love with Lysander. So Hermia does not want to marry Demetrius, whom Aegeus has chosen for her. The Duke Theseus tells Hermia to listen to her father and marry Demetrius. Otherwise, she will only have two options. Either she has to die or she has to live like a nun. Upset with the Duke's decision, Hermia and Lysander decides to elope from Athens. So they escape from Athens at night but get lost in the woods. Now Hermia has shared the secret of eloping with Lysander with Helena, who is in love with Demetrius. Now Helena tells the secret to Demetrius. Demetrius follows Hermia and Lysander to the woods. And Helena also follows Demetrius in the hope that someday Demetrius will choose her and not Hermia. Meanwhile, a group of mechanicals or laborers are doing rehearsal for a play that they want to perform in Duke Theseus and Hippolyta's wedding. So the play that they have chosen is the tragic love story of Pyramus and Thisbe. So there is Nick Bottom, a weaver, who is playing the role of Pyramus and Francis Flute, a bellows mender, is playing the role of Thisbe. And Peter Quince, the carpenter, is advising everybody on how to act. Act 2. Oberon, the king of the fairies, has recently quarreled with his queen, Titania. Titania has acquired an Indian magical boy from one of her waiting women 
and is not ready to hand over the boy to the king so that the king can use him as a servant. Therefore, Oberon is very upset and he wants to take revenge on Titania to acquire the magical boy. Oberon tells Puck, his fairy servant, to go to the forest and fetch a purple flower with juice that makes people fall in love with the next creature they see. Oberon overhears Helena and Demetrius arguing in the forest. Oberon tells Puck to squeeze the juice of the flower in the eyes of sleeping Demetrius so that Demetrius can fall in love with Helena. But Puck mistakenly pours the juice of the flower in the eyes of sleeping Lysander because according to him all Athenians look the same. When Lysander wakes up and sees Helena, he immediately falls in love with Helena, making Hermia confused. On the other hand, Puck on realizing his mistake also puts the flower juice in the eyes of sleeping Demetrius. So when Demetrius wakes up, he sees Helena and he also falls in love with Helena. So at the end of Act 2, we can see that both the men, Lysander and Demetrius, are in love with Helena. Act 3. Puck overhears the rehearsal of the workers in the forest. He plays a trick on them by giving Nick Bottom a donkey's head. Meanwhile, Oberon has placed the juice on sleeping Titania's eyes. Nick Bottom singing wakes up Queen Titania. Queen Titania sees Nick Bottom with a donkey's head and falls in love with him. She entertains him with her fairies. Meanwhile, Lysander and Demetrius, under the spell of the flower juice, pursue Helena. Hermia is jealous and confused because no one is giving her any attention. Oberon and Puck watch the chaos. Oberon tells Puck to set things right. When Hermia, Lysander, Demetrius and Helena are sleeping in the woods after arguing the entire day, Puck places restorative juice on Lysander's eyes. Act 4 After being pampered by Titania's fairies the entire afternoon, Nick Bottom falls asleep beside Titania. King Oberon places restorative juice on Titania's eyes and restores her eyesight and wakes her up. So when Queen Titania wakes up, she's embarrassed on seeing Nick Bottom. She apologizes to King Oberon and is ready to give him the magical Indian boy. Oberon is happy and tells Puck to remove Nick Bottom's donkey head. So Nick Bottom's donkey head is removed and he returns back to Athens. Meanwhile, Lysander, Hermia, Demetrius and Helena are woken up by Duke Theseus and Queen Hippolyta's hunting party. Lysander sees Hermia and falls in love with her again. As Demetrius is no longer in love with Hermia and wants to marry Helena, Duke Theseus no longer listens to Aegeus's demand of Hermia marrying Demetrius. In fact, the Duke tells that the two new couples should join his wedding and it should be a triple wedding. So the two couples, Lysander Hermia and Demetrius Helena, are happily reunited. The lovers feel that the events of the last night were a dream. Nick Bottom feels that Titania's love and being pampered by the fairies were also a dream. Act 5 Hermia, Lysander, Demetrius, Helena attain Duke Theseus and Hippolyta's wedding. The play Pyramus and Thisbe is presented before the wedding guests. Peter Quinns, the carpenter, says the prologue. The mechanicals act out a clumsy version of the story that makes everyone laugh. At the end of the play, Francis Flute and Nick Bottom presents a ridiculous dance. After the couples retire to bed, 
King Oberon and Queen Titania bless the palace and its people. Puck makes a final address to the audience and asks for applause. So now that you have seen the entire summary of A Midsummer Night's Dream, it is time to critically analyze the play as a romantic comedy. That is a love story that ends in marriage. So we can see that there are four love stories in the play. At first we have Duke Theseus and Queen Hippolyta who are engaged to be married. Second is King Oberon and Queen Titania who are having a fight of sorts because Queen Titania has adopted an Indian boy and is not ready to hand him over to the king. Third is Hermia and Lysander who are badly in love with each other but each year Hermia's father is not letting them marry. Fourth we have Helena and Demetrius. Helena loves Demetrius but Demetrius wants to marry Hermia. A romantic comedy has a main plot and a subplot. In the main plot, an eligible man and woman fall in love but are unable to marry due to some reason. Then some external factors such as magic and fairies such as in the case of A Midsummer Night's Dream solves all their love problems. The subplot, the characters of the subplot belong from a lower strata of society such as the mechanicals in the case of A Midsummer Night's Dream. The objective of the characters in the subplot are to parody the main plot and to solve all the problems of the characters in the main plot. So in Act 1 we see that Duke Theseus tells Hermia to marry Demetrius, the man whom her father has chosen for her because that is the law of Athens. If Hermia does not marry Demetrius, she has to die or live like a nun. Hermia and Lysander plan to elope from Athens to Lysander aunt's home which is outside Athens so that the law of Athens cannot separate the lovers. So we can see that the action starts in the court of Athens but because it is in the court that the lover's marriage is obstructed, they go to a place closer to nature which encourages love. So Lysander and Hermia get lost in the woods and that is the place which solves all their problems. So by Act 2, all the main characters except Theseus, Hippolyta and Aegeus are in the forest where magic, fairies, moonlight and dreams create a lot of confusion and also solves all their love problems throughout Act 2 and Act 3. When all the problems are solved, the lovers return back to the court or the city, which no longer stands in the way of their love. So we can see that in Act 4, Hermia Lysander, Helena Demetrius, Hippolyta Theseus are married in a triple wedding. And in Act 5, there is a grand celebration of the wedding where the mechanicals enact a play. So we can say that A Midsummer Night's Dream is a perfect romantic comedy. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found the video helpful. If you found it helpful, then do share it with your friends and like it. I'll be back next week with a brand new video on a literary work. Till then, stay tuned to Learning Literature with Purba. You can also listen to the Learning Literature with Purba podcast on Spotify where new bite-sized episodes are uploaded every Monday and Thursday. Also stay connected on Facebook and Instagram. If you want to be a member of Learning Literature with Purva, then do join us by clicking on the blue join button. And stay tuned to Learning Literature with Purva and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.